to episode 11 of Player 2 Reviews, where today I'm going to be covering a game that, once again, not too many people have probably heard of. Uh, it was kind of a hidden gem on the Super Nintendo, and that game is... Pack in Time. Let's take a look! Pack in Time is a platforming title that was created by French gaming developer Callisto in 1993. However, the title was originally called Fury of the Furries, and instead featured a little furball creature who was on an adventure to return his home planet back to normal after being invaded. In 1994, Namco got their hands on the game, and after some tweaking, the little furball became Pac-Man and Pack in Time was born. And it wasn't until early 1995 that it was re-released on the SNES. The story for Pack in Time is pretty ridiculous, as Bandai tried their best to make this seem as though it was originally intended to be a Pac-Man game from the get-go. It roughly just boils down to that the, the Ghost Witch, who created the ghost from the original Pac-Man, cast a spell on Pac-Man which sent him back in time, and now he has to collect all the pellets in every level to somehow get him back to his family in the present day. It's terrible to say the least, but it is of little concern, because like most platformers, the story plays a backseat to the gameplay, and thankfully it more than makes up for that. The gameplay for Pack in Time is both its saving grace and its greatest downfall. While the game starts out extremely fun and fairly addictive, it sadly changes drastically as the game progresses into a hair-pulling, controller-smashing experience, and only the most hardcore fans of puzzle platformers will complete this game. However, despite this fact, the game is really fun and rewarding if you stick with it, and even the most casual gamer will enjoy the first few levels, just for being able to platform with the little yellow guy himself. Pac-Man starts with just the basic abilities to run and jump around the screen, as he tries to collect every pellet within the level. However, not every pellet can be reached so easily, so Pac-Man has to acquire up to four different abilities each level. These are obtained by jumping through four different colored hoops you can find hanging around the worlds. Jumping through the yellow rings will allow Pac-Man the ability to shoot fireballs from his mouth, which can be used to drop some of the enemies running around the level. Whereas the green ring will give Pac-Man a rope, which he can use to swing along ceilings and ledges to reach new areas and higher up pellets. When Pac-Man jumps through the blue ring, he gains the ability to swim and blow bubbles at enemies underwater. And the last is the red ring, which gives Pac a hammer which he can then use to smash through certain objects throughout the level as well. With these objects in your arsenal, Pac-Man is free to collect every pellet and proceed to the next level. Mastering the controls can be a little tricky though, especially when it comes to the rope. But once you get the hang of it, you'll find you can pull off some pretty epic maneuvers. Alongside the abilities and regular pellets, Pac-Man can find power pellets, which are used to once again kill off those pesky ghosts when they show up every now and then. Fireballs simply won't cut it for these guys, sadly. The graphics for Pac-Man Time are surprisingly good, and this is mostly due to the fact that they took the time to completely switch the game engine to complement the aesthetic graphics allowed for on the Super Nintendo, so everything in the game is quite pleasing to the eye. All the sprites are quite large and detailed, and every level is bright and changes appropriately to the time and location Pac is supposed to be currently visiting. The music, however, isn't so good. In fact, it's quite repetitive and boring, which sucks because it really does have a lot of potential and you will likely enjoy what you hear when you first turn it on. However, it doesn't stray much from the very first tune and by the end of it, it just feels like you've been listening to the same song forever. So if you plan on playing, I'd recommend booting up your favorite playlist or podcast because your ears will thank you for it later. Overall, Pack in Time is a fairly decent puzzle platforming game that certainly isn't for everyone. If you've ever wondered what it'd be like to do some platforming with this iconic little pizza face, then give it a shot. But if everything in this video doesn't have you convinced you need to try it, then I'd suggest letting this one pass. You won't be missing out on too much.
Alright guys, just want to say thanks again to everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the review, please feel free to comment, subscribe, and if you didn't, feel free to mention why below as well. And if you haven't already heard of the Cartridge Club, feel free to click on the link here to check out what game we're playing this month. No pun intended. So anyways guys, uh, be sure to check back soon for some more gaming coverage. This has been a Cartridge Bros production, I'm Player2, and we'll see you next time.